Blue Group. So I've been asked by uh, a few people on uh, the steps I took to make my panorama for Stellarium. And I really don't want to get into a full-fledged tutorial. I just want to show you the devices that you can use. Uh, and uh, the reason why I made my pano. And, uh, this, and, and actually how I, I uh, figured out how to make my pano. So uh, back in the day I was a graphics artist. And I had tools to make 360 uh, panoramas for... Uh, the video the film and video industry and I have a device here called the quick pan spherical that is made by uh, Canadian it's a Pennsylvania company I don't even know if they're around anymore but this device takes a DSLR and it has click points so there's a click point there's a click point and to get the up and down you would just move move it like that and then do your click points and i can't tell you i can't stress enough how level being level is very important to making your panel if you look at mine uh you'll see that when you get to this part of my panorama there's a seam and that's because i wasn't level but I didn't care. It was close enough for me. And the other thing you can do is this is the DJI uh, Mimo, I believe it's called, version 4, maybe. I'm not sure. And this just takes a smartphone and it has an app. And one of the things in the app is a panel uh, for the camera. And it will automatically make your panel. I can't use this. I bought it thinking I could, but because my. It, obstructions are so freaking tall uh, it didn't work it didn't go high enough for me so I had to pull out the old uh, gate and device and use that because then I could I could just uh, grab the sections of the sky that I need the thing with a panorama is if you have a lot of blue sky there's nothing to uh, um, there's nothing for the software to grab, so the panel will fail. So I just grab what I need, and basically what I've done is, uh, you'll see that out here, uh, these are my marks for my Raza, and then these are my marks for the C14. North is this way, up there is the Pole Star, and this is this stand is in the middle of both mounts this is perfect it's a little low but i don't care it's close enough for hand grenades and horseshoes and what i would do is uh i'll bring out the dgi just to show you in fact phones a lot of phones have a 360 panel app that you can get some are free some aren't and you would basically do what this is going to do. So I'll turn this on. And you'll see she woke up. And let me get... Uh, I want you to see in my... So here's the DJI app. Let me get some more. It is full tilt bright. Okay, I'm connected to the camera. And one of the features for the camera is pano, which it's all set up. I'll just make sure that I'm facing north, which I am. And then I'll hit record. And... I am not in panel mode, sorry. Photos, panel, there's panel mode. Okay, now it's in panel mode. And if you look, when I hit this, it's going to start doing its panorama. And it's gonna do it automatically. 
which is why I, I bought it in the first place. <laughs> goes through its little routine, now it's doing the bottom. So it's made, the, it's done. Now this isn't a true panel, it, it's not a 360, but here's the panel that it's generated. And hopefully you can see this. You can't scroll on it, but those are the uh, three by three by three images that it made. So you would just do one of these and then uh, turn the camera to the next section and, and have it make it not nine more. And then when that's done, you would turn the camera and make nine more until you got a, a wrap. And then uh, let me get this. Go home, turn this off. Come on, baby. So now the camera is off. We'll go in here. And with those series of images, you can then go into. Uh, I use Photoshop. Photoshop has a stitching program. Uh, that will allow you to bring a bunch of images in and uh, once you have the images in you tell it the type of panorama you want to make in Stellarium's case I think it's a spherical I can't remember and when it's done uh, the next thing that you would do is uh, that's why I like blue sky not days because if you got clouds it makes it harder to to uh, select the sky and if you have a blue sky like that that's easier to select as a color and what will happen is wherever the blue sky is in the trees it will knock you can make a selection for that it, it will uh, that selection is something that you can use to uh, delete or make transparent and anything that's transparent in Stellarium is going to allow the stars through so I will just uh, come out here and I will show you basically what I have <laughs> it's an old neighborhood these trees are 72 vintage I used to jump over those when I was a little younger and uh, we'll start here and I'll just do a slow pan you can see that we've got some big trees that are close uh, I'd say these are 80 to 100 feet, these trees right here. And then the really bad obstruction is right here because it's so close. And as you could see, I can pan up and it's just like a wall. <laughs> and then I have my house and then that's where the planets come through. And these trees are just about tall enough now that they're gonna be blocking the planets probably in a year. And I'll have to find a new location. So I've got some uh, rather large obstructions. So what I'll do is uh, I'll take uh, I'll take and show you in uh, Photoshop with the image that I just made how you can uh, select the blue sky to make the transparency. I won't be able to show you how to make the spherical image map you can figure that out on your own it's not that hard and uh, we'll go from there so I'm gonna uh, next time you see me we'll be at the uh, computer or I am back uh, at my computer after uh, showing you the devices and how I made uh, my 360 and the reasons why I did it where I did it excuse me so now what i want to show you are all of the images that i had taken to make my 360. and i did two one was with the this was with the dslr 
and you can see that there's 60 total. So I'll take three off. I've got 57 images uh, that make up this image here. And then for uh, the DGAI device, uh, I had more images, but I wasn't liking the way the thing was stitching or not stitching, but uh, I have some artifacts because of the, the camera's just not a good camera on my cell phone. So the images weren't coming out just quite as good. And you can see that there's a lot of variation in the sky colors. So I didn't throw them out, but I kept them. This uh, And then I, I basically used Photoshop uh, to stitch the images. I'm not going to show you how to stitch the images. There's plenty of videos on the interwebs that show you how to make 360s. Uh, there's apps that do everything on the cell phone. There's, uh, if you want to use a DSLR like I did, there's a device that you can buy that will, uh, make sure that you're hitting the proper um, overlaps to get your images, which is what I did. And then after it's stitched in Photoshop, you would import your images, do a batch import. And then once you've got the batch import, you can do a, uh, a stitch of the images, which I can't show you at the moment. And then once that is done, you get something like this. And what you need to do is get rid of your sky. So that's this image. And uh, that's a transparency. So if we zoom in on that, you can see that uh, I have the cutouts for where I'm at the tree so that the stars will shine through the trees. Didn't need to do that, but that's just me. And then what the size of this is 2048 by 2686 or 68. The 2048 is important. You can't have a spherical panorama in Stellarium that is wider than so what I did was uh, I got an image like this and I basically just cropped because you don't need all the sky. So I just cropped right above my highest point. And this image is 2048 by 1348. And then this is what I used in Stellarium. And I did a video uh that shows you how to bring your panorama into Stellarium and I will link to that video and this is it here how to add a panoramic image to Stellarium and then uh why you need to watch this is I go into uh, what you have to do. Uh, once you get the image in Stellarium, there are some things that you need to do to make sure that you line it up correctly. And that would be the landscape init file. And the map ticks top, 90 degrees is the very top, minus is the very bottom of the image. And with me cropping the sky out, I had to make sure that uh, I had the top of the image correctly placed on the sphere. 
And with my image, I was about five pixels or so, maybe a little more off of the, the 90 degree mark. I'll show you in a minute. And then this angle rotates is uh, how you will line up east and west. So I hit a mark uh, that I laid on the ground when I made my panel so that I could align it up with north. And then you need the coordinates that you used when you made the map. Or the or not the map, but the spherical image. So if I go into Stellarium, you will see right here is my mark. Right there is the pole star. And you can just see that some of the stars are peeking through. Some gaps in the in the uh, panorama. And then this is my seam. I wasn't perfectly level, but this is close enough for me. And I didn't do a very good job of uh, blackening this area out for the, my transparency. I don't care. <laughs> it it shows well enough for me and then this is the bottom right there is 90 degrees and that's the five degrees that i'm off with my panel so minus the minus numbers or the top number which this is 90 degrees i have mine set for that's the top of my my spherical right here. So I'm about 15 or 25 degrees maybe off of uh, 90 to line up top and bottom and then on, uh, or not top, but to line up the top so that my image represents what I look at when I'm standing outside and then my bottom minus 90 is about five degrees off and that makes my uh, horizon correct and then the uh, angle i think i was minus 63 that aligns this it turns the whole sphere or it turns the whole spherical map panel map on the sphere so that you can align this up with north so that's basically what i did to get to uh, my images from photoshop into uh, stellarium and if you watch that i'll put a link into that video that shows you how to get your uh, panoramic into stellarium and what you need to do with those numbers I show you by making little changes with the numbers what that does to the panoramic and it's not as hard as you think it just takes some patience and you can put as much time or as little time into what that image is it could be uh, something that you make in illustrator and you bring in or you can make it in photoshop using the line tool if you want a real rough one so any questions, just leave your comments below and uh, we'll catch you on the next one.